So welcome everyone to today's conversation on team coaching. So our setup as we've been doing is a 30 minute presentation. And then after that 30 minutes, I'll stop the recording. We'll move into the live discussion and have a conversation. In terms of the agenda for this 30 minutes, we are gonna go through some definitions. We're gonna look at competencies because ICF now has competencies for team coaching. Unsure if you're aware, you can actually earn a credential in team coaching, so that's available to you. We'll discuss uh, the reasons for team coaching and actually group coaching too, and then also the benefits. We'll consider preparation and planning if you're going to do team or group coaching, processes and technologies, more considerations in terms of setting it up, how you're measuring value, and then of course the qualitative benefits of team coaching. And we have a few tips, techniques, and tools we'll discuss at the end. Uh, quick look at resources before moving into Q&A and discussion time. So hopefully this will be helpful and insightful for you. A quick tip in terms of the conversation, because we're gonna look at team coaching competencies and the team coaching competencies are in addition to the competencies we already have and use for individual coaching, it's really helpful to know that and have that to reference. Um, easily available on our website, in your materials for from completing a program, that kind of thing. So as we move through, the piece that we're looking at is the team coaching competency um, additions to the regular competencies that are specific for the team coaching. We're gonna start out with the definition of coaching. Uh, unsure if you remember it or familiar with it, hopefully yes. I love this definition. I love the word choice in this definition. The first word that to me just jumps out and I think is hugely significant. It says coaching is partnering. It's partnering with clients. What that tells us is that the coach is not there as the expert. When you think about hiring a financial planner, an attorney, a doctor, a counselor, whatever else it is, you see them as the expert. They are the ones with the information, the answers, et cetera. When we're a coach, we are truly a partner. We are on the same playing field. The client is the subject matter expert. They are their own best expert. We are there with the process. And it goes on to say, a thought provoking and creative process, which makes it super fun in terms of the conversation. That's probably what many of us like most about coaching is it being thought provoking and creative. And then saying it is to maximize them to maximize, sorry, it is to support them maximizing their own personal and professional potential. So love the definition, love all the components of that definition and what it really tells us in terms of what coaching is. So uh, for those of you joining us now, hi, Wyetta, good to see you. What we're doing is the first 30 minutes is more of a recorded presentation. You're more than welcome to uh, jump in and add and discuss and give your voice because love to hear additional voices on this. Um, it is going on YouTube, so hopefully uh, whatever works for everybody. And then at the end of the presentation part, we're gonna turn off the recording and shift into a discussion. So, okay, team coaching. You are preparing for and coaching teams who have a shared focus and objectives, engaging them in the process and in the planning. So a team literally is a functioning team. They're working together on the same thing. That is different from group coaching. A group coaching is when you have uh, individuals who have common interests or goals. So if you're doing group coaching, you're preparing for and then working with that group who's doing it based on individual goals or objectives. What I love is this next slide that really illustrates uh, the difference between team coaching and group coaching. 
So when you have a group coach, the common central hub, if you will, is the coach themselves, because each person in that group is working on their own individual goals and objectives. Yes, they're similar. They have similar interests, similar focus, and they're brought together by the coach. Alternatively, in the diagram on the right with the team, the team is there. They're currently functioning and operating together. They have shared objectives, shared focus, and the team coach is brought in to support them in how they function as a team. Uh, so hopefully that gives you some good insight. Now, in terms of the competencies, we all have learned and work with our core competencies for coaching from the International Coaching Federation. So the team coaching competencies are in addition. So for each of the eight competencies we have for coaching, there are now extra elements when you're talking about team coaching. The first competency for all of us individually as coaches is demonstrating ethical practice. That means literally knowing what the code of ethics is telling us, what it means, and then living that in the work that we do. And that's incredibly significant, of course, in terms of the quality of the coaching we do and laying the foundation for the client knowing, okay, I can trust you, I can count on this, et cetera. So very important element to it. Now, in addition to everything we have in our individual competencies with team coaching. On top of that, we are coaching the entire team as a single entity. So seeing it as a whole versus a number of individuals, that is different than group coaching, obviously. It is also significant, just like in coaching, we're really clear on what our role is as coach. When you're working with a team, being clear on what your role is. You've got to separate team coaching from team building activities, from team training, team consulting, team mentoring, team facilitation, and other team development modalities. Then demonstrating the knowledge and the skill to practice a specific blend of team development modalities being offered. So what we're talking about there is fairly common that coaches are offering more than one type of service. You all are probably familiar with that. Sometimes coaches also have a job and then they do coaching, they're internal coaches uh, or coaching on the side, that kind of thing. You also have a lot of coaches that in addition to offering coaching services, offer facilitation services, offer training services, consulting services, et cetera. And they have to differentiate the different services they're offering. This applies for team coaches as well. Often they offer multiple services. So you may have a team coach that also does team building activities, for example. They've got to very clearly differentiate them and they also have to have the knowledge and the skill to move between the different modalities and in terms of what they're offering. It is rather interesting, this next point, to say adopt some more directive team development modality only when needed to help the team achieve their goal. So that brings in this whole question, okay, coaching is very specifically non-directive. What do we mean by that? Sometimes when a team is getting stuck, it's saying, okay, the team is stuck. Hey, what's going on here? And moving into that. Personal preference, I don't like that terminology because I truly believe even when the team is stuck, as coach, you can ask them, questions and have them figure out what's going to serve them in terms of moving forward. Personal preference on that one. Uh, our next point, maintaining trust, transparency, and clarity when fulfilling multiple roles related to team coaching. Then we move on to competency two. So in addition to everything we have for our individual competencies, competency two for team coaching also adds that the coach is engaging in coaching supervision for support development and accountability when needed. Again, an interesting one. So the first thing is who decides when needed? Uh, that's, that's a tough question. Obviously the coach has got to be self-aware 
in terms of ensuring they are there and capable of being fully present uh, and serving the client effectively. So that's a piece of that. In terms of coaching supervision, some people understand that definition, some people don't. Let's talk about that for a second. When we think about coaching, we know what individual coaching is. Mentor coaching is a combination of coaching and mentoring. And it's very specifically for the purpose of helping somebody who is moving toward earning a credential or renewing a credential. And there are very specific parameters around mentor coaching. Coaching supervision is different. The idea of coaching supervision is really elevating the development of the coach as coach. And it's a phenomenal process. In coaching supervision, the coach is sharing, okay, this is how I'm showing up as a coach. This is how my client is showing up as a client. This is what's going on in our interaction and our engagement. And here's outcomes and what's happening. And really exploring that at a much deeper level. So it's phenomenal. In team coaching, that can be incredibly helpful, especially because you're talking about the dynamics of multiple personalities. It goes on to say that the team coach is going to be objective and aware of those dynamics and patterns. So really paying attention to it. Uh, something that often comes up as a result of this kind of insight is where there's co-coaching for teams. When there's a lot going on with the team, it can be incredibly helpful to have a co-coach. Commonly or often, what will happen is one person will take the lead on doing the coaching, whereas the other person is more in an observer capacity. And then we'll discuss that with the lead coach. Here's what I'm noticing. Here's what's happening. Because lead coach is focused on the coaching in the moment as compared to some of the dynamics and looks and exchanges that they don't notice. So it's really helpful. Okay, continuing on for competency three with the agreement. In addition to everything we have in our individual competencies, now you're explaining also what team coaching is and is not com compared to different modalities. The partnering process can be super interesting with team coaching because you've got the team leader, you've got team members, you've got stakeholders, potentially co-coaches. And there's a lot to discuss in terms of how everybody's functioning together and what everybody's role is, a lot to get clear with. And then it goes on, you're also partnering with the team leader to determine how ownership of the coaching process is going to be shared. Uh, because there's a lot of people involved in terms of What's the flow going to be? How are we having these conversations, et cetera? For competency four, uh, much in keeping with what we all know and are familiar with from our individual competencies, maintaining that safe space for open and honest interaction. The complicating factor in a team is they may or may not be comfortable with each other. Uh, what their dynamics are in working with each other really plays into that. It goes on to say, and I think it's really interesting that they use the word promotes, uh, promotes the team viewing itself as a single entity with a common identity. I, I'm not sure I'd pick the word promotes. Uh, it's recognizing and working with that when it's there uh, or exploring the possibility of it being there. Uh, do they want that there? It goes on to say fosters expression of individual team members and collective team feelings, perceptions, concerns, beliefs, hopes, and, and suggestions. So you're working with them both on the individual and as a team, incurring participation and contribution from all of them, partnering with them to work on their team rules and norms, of course, promoting the effective communication amongst them and supporting them in terms of identifying and resolving internal conflict. Uh, hopefully you remember from your certified professional coach class, the section on conflict coaching. And there are whole, um, there's a whole video of it on our YouTube channel if you want more depth and detail on that. Incredibly helpful uh, in these dynamics. For competency five, in addition to all of our individual elements, You've got using your full range of sensory and perceptual abilities to focus on what's important, 
to me, that applies in individual coaching too. So <laughs> I get it. They're calling it out here. It is important when you have multiple personalities in the room. Uh, use as a co-coach when it's agreed to, especially because it can allow the team coach to be more present in that session because the co-coach is observing all the extra pieces going on. Um, encouraging the team members to pause and reflect on how they're interacting with each other. And then I think this one's good, moving in and out of the dialogue as appropriate. We do that to some extent in individual coaching. When the team is productive, they're moving forward, they're having the conversation, they've got traction and making progress, great. It's okay to sit back and let them keep going. And when that starts stalling, that's when you move back in. For competency six, our additional elements, uh, noticing how the perspectives shared by each team member relate to views from other team members and the team dialogue. Uh, noticing how each person impacts the collective team energy, uh, engagement and focus, that can be super interesting. Some people add energy, some people pull it out. Some people support the, the collaboration. Some people add to conflict. It's really interesting to be aware of that. Uh, notice both the verbal and the nonverbal communication patterns amongst the team members. Uh, and again, this is where an observer or co-coach is really helpful because you've got alliances, conflicts, opportunities with all of those dynamics. Uh, modeling, confident, effective communication and collaboration, uh, working with a co-coach or other experts. Uh, while that applies in individual coaching, it just doesn't occur as much. Uh, so that's probably key to what's behind calling it out here. And then, of course, encouraging the team to own the dialogue. For competency seven, challenging the team's assumptions behaviors, and meaning-making processes to enhance their collective awareness or insight. Now, we do that with individuals uh, as well. It's now you're doing it with this group of people. And then use questions and other techniques to foster team development and facilitate their ownership of the collective dialogue. And for eight, encouraging dialogue and reflection to help the team identify their goals and the steps to achieve their goals. And that's where it's a shared goal, something they're working on together. Hopefully that was insightful to go through those additions to our individual coaching competencies when you're working with a team. Feel free if you have a comment or a question to throw out in the chat box. And while you're thinking and typing or whatever else you wanna be doing, I'm gonna keep this going. So in terms of offering uh, team coaching as a service, it is a fabulous way to access the wisdom of multiple people. It can spark creativity, uh, supporting that dialogue. It can be huge in terms of managing conflict on a team, definitely supports improving relationships, increasing productivity of the team increasing engagement uh, with everybody who's on it. And of course, it supports that coaching culture. Team coaching, additionally, bottom line, can be really cost-effective for organizations um, as compared to pure individual coaching, because now you're working with multiple people at one time. Uh, in terms of preparing for this, planning for this, one of the first things you're doing is defining, okay, what's the purpose of having a team coach? Is it because a project is stalling, they need to move it forward? Is it because there's conflict amongst people on the team? Or maybe there's conflict between this team and another team and they're dependent on each other for work they're doing, whatever else it is. So what is the true purpose of bringing in the coach? And from there, you're identifying what are the specific objectives you're working on? While identifying participants may seem straightforward, it, it's more complicated than that. So very specifically, yeah, we can identify who's on the team. Then the question, next question becomes, is having the team leader in the team sessions good or bad? <laughs> What's the impact? What are the reasons for it? 
specifically, sometimes you have a team leader that if they are there, there are people on the team who are simply going to filter, hold back, that kind of thing. Alternatively, you may have a team leader that's phenomenal, very supportive of everybody on the team and very helpful in terms of moving the dialogue. Uh, it can depend. And sometimes what's happening is the team coach is meeting with the individuals on the team before starting the team coaching in terms of exploring these things and setting it up. Another consideration in terms of participants is sometimes it, there's value in bringing in stakeholders. Uh, if it is two teams in conflict, maybe bringing in some people from the other team, uh, it can mean bringing in sometimes vendors or customers uh, to these team meetings. It really can vary. Of course, the approach, uh, much like with individuals, there's so many different ways we can have the conversation. We can talk pros and cons. We can talk through each possible answer and what it looks like to implement it and what the desired outcome is. We can also simply brainstorm ideas. There's many, many different ways to approach it. Um, how do they want to manage what the work is, how they're handling it, how they're discussing it, et cetera. From there, you're choosing processes in terms of having the team coaching sessions, engaging in those team coaching sessions, of course. Now, another thought for you in terms of approach and processes, many of you have taken time to look at the different assessment tools you have. I know we have somebody here who's all about these assessment tools because they're super helpful uh, in different circumstances. With team coaching, they can be really helpful too. That may be part of what you're setting up in working with the team. So for example, those of you that graduated, you can give somebody a desk and you can do it at wholesale pricing. Well, then if you have a team and each person has a disc report, you can pull a team report where it looks at all of those different personalities and how they function together. And that can be incredibly helpful too. In terms of processes, so using the assessments is one of them, having that co-coach doing the observation, of course, the active coaching with your questioning. Now, when you're doing that, it can be you're coaching everybody simultaneously. It may be that the coaching is really directed at one person in particular who's leading a particular segment, or it can be they start coaching each other. So it's simply bringing that up and they start asking each other questions, which can be really powerful. Uh, it can also be a brainstorming process, uh, very much uh, feeding into the idea of a mastermind group. So there are a lot of different ways to come at the conversation. Similarly, there are a lot of different technologies to consider when you're doing team coaching. So you've got some general tools. For example, you can do surveys, you can do word diagrams, you can get on with creative tools, bring up things like Canva or other things like that and creating something. Uh, you can set up polls with your team. You can do voting and there's different ways to set up the voting. You can play with how you're managing notes. Are they live? Are people seeing them as you go? Are they separate? Are they shared? Where, how, et cetera. Uh, in terms of the sessions themselves, uh, you can look at virtual sessions using online platforms or alternatively uh, using conference calling. When you're using these platforms, there are a lot of considerations here. I know some of you know me as kind of an ethics geek. What I will say is this, not all platforms are confidential. You really want to be aware of that. Uh, one of the very common ones is an organization will have a platform they use and they they own it and manage it and control it, which means they can access sessions and notes and those kinds of things. So then, okay, wait a minute, what happens with confidentiality? Uh, alternatively, uh, there are platforms out there that you can access and use like Google Meets and that kind of thing, where again, confidentiality isn't there. So it's definitely a consideration to think about what you're using in terms of a platform if you're doing virtual team coaching. And then of course you have the live sessions as well where everybody's together. Um, Let's see, a comment in the chat box. Yeah, uh, the disc can be absolutely game-changing when you're working with the team, the different personalities. So good call out.
good call out. Uh, another thing to be looking at when you move into team coaching is how you're measuring value. Commonly, there are metrics available in different organizations that can be a great go-to if they're in place. You can look at what they have now and then look at, okay, after you do coaching, where are those metrics at? That may include engagement. It can include productivity. Sometimes you can even pull up sales numbers. Um, and there's some great studies on that. You can look at talent retention. There's a lot of different things you can look at in terms of those metrics. Another way of measuring value is looking at outcomes. Are they completing specific tasks, achieving the objectives that were established? And then of course you have the qualitative feedback side. What's happening with the relationships? What are the individual impressions of people on the team? Are they feeling better about the team, feeling like they're working more effectively, those kinds of things. Good idea to set up how it's gonna be measured before you start. So very important piece to that. Uh, in terms of a few tips for you, do much like an individual coaching, empower them in terms of the choice, because when they have choice, they have ownership. Invite them to do the sharing, the reflecting, the brainstorming, and then make their decisions. As far as techniques, remember you are adjusting to personal style and there are more personal styles in the room now. And then of course, learning style, keep it positive and proactive. And I'm sure you all are well familiar with that in terms of what we do in coaching. Uh, tools that can be helpful. We mentioned uh, the DISC team assessment and there are more. And of course, co-creating tools is something that's worth noting because the team knows what they're doing. They know how they function together and that can be incredibly helpful for them. In terms of resources for you. So Center for Coaching Certification uh, for Coach Training in addition to that, in organizations where a coaching culture is desired, uh, there is also a coaching skills for leaders, just a, a mini 10-hour program that helps leaders understand some of the key elements of coaching uh, and begin implementing those in what they're doing as a leader, in addition to training of the coaches. Then we have Coach123. Some of you are familiar with this. This is the coaching firm. And through Coach123, you can have coaches for individual coaching, coaches for team coaching, coaches for group coaching. So if you're a coach and looking for opportunities, let us know. Uh, more and more are coming through on Coach123. So that's an opportunity. And then of course, for organizations, if there's a call for uh, coaches, we make it super easy in terms of matching a coach for the individual who will work with them, uh, working with your budget and process wise, just making it super convenient. Of course, other resources, information where, where you can get more. So the coaching blog is there. There's a new blog uh, twice a week, uh, the book series, uh, there's podcast every week uh, also. And then of course the monthly newsletter. If you have questions about any of what's offered or available, let me know. Uh, we can do a quick call. We can do an email. We can schedule time. Uh, definitely available for outsourcing in terms of coaching programs, uh, training coaches or training leaders in coaching skills, and then of course, providing the coaching. For everyone here, if you are interested in having a conversation about bringing coaching into your organization, bringing in some coaching skills for leaders, training, those kinds of things. More than happy to have a conversation with you and, and share, hey, this is what it looks like, how it works, et cetera. Uh, for everyone here, for yourself, be developing your plan. So what are your insights from this session? What are you gonna do with them? And of course, for yourself, having a coach is a good idea and developing your support network. Uh, we're gonna move into question and answer time and discussion. I do wanna say thank you to everyone for being here, for your participation, and we are available uh, to be of service, etc. What's gonna happen now is I'm gonna end the recording and we're gonna move into a live discussion after the recording's over. So thank you everybody. 
do check out www.coachcert.com and www.coach-123.com. Thank you.